Well, today we're going over the additive manufacturing outlook for 2025, the industry. We've got the Deloitte reports, the McKinsey reports, and they're all singing the praises of what this industry is turning into. Now, one of the roadblocks to that is actually having qualified engineers slash technicians to run the machines. There's still a shortage. Not that many people know how to run 3D printers. And there's Whoa. basically no... Lots of people know how to run 3D lots printers. Of, yeah. That's not what anyone needs. Right. So and there's really not many actual full programs in, in university at all. There's like four or something. Are, are those... Uh, what kind of programs are those, Matt? Are those bachelors, masters? They're more like certificates and whatnot. Carnegie Mellon has an... Masters of Science in Additive Manufacturing that covers the entire spectrum of 3D printing technologies from basic principles to complex materials and cutting edge production technologies. So I guess it appears more like Carnegie Mellon seems to be the only like big university, a big name that has something. And a lot of the other ones listed here are either online schools like Penn State World Campus. Oh yeah, it's a great way to learn high temperature additive manufacturing yeah, yeah. online. Yeah, watch a video on it. Well, I mean, I guess you're watching our videos, but we actually sell the machine. Touche. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, you got to get your hands in there. You so got to burn your fingers multiple times. That, it really comes down to experience, right? Oh, so yeah. you what think do, what you're we... 220 degree hot end? Yeah. yeah I got but, 450 degree burns, baby. So I earned those. From our experience right now, what kind of people do we look for and do we hire? Well, there's mechanical engineering degrees, but that doesn't necessarily, they've got a lot of knowledge in a lot of areas. As it stands, Experience in peak and ultim either requires you have a lot of money and like to screw around, um, or uh, how are you going to learn this stuff? By necessity. Yeah. And, or working at a place like what happened with early Vision Miner, where you're not going to find anyone who has experience 3D printing these things. And we're talking way back in the day. Yeah. Now you can, but um, they'll be like, yeah, I've used peak and ultim in an in a FDM machine. It, it just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. In these programs, they shouldn't get these hobby machines. A lot of them are. They need peak and ultimate, and then you'll go into that. You're not going to get a high-paying job as an additive engineer if for any more printing. Maybe you can get away with ABS, but really, if you want to be working for in aerospace, they don't use any of those materials. Well, that's an interesting point, they too, because even for ABS, they just buy the Stratasys machine for 150 grand. Yeah, and with ABS, you're not knows. necessary. Yeah. I think you're going to start seeing, I, I would put my money on it, actually, that a necessity for trained individuals so that they've said, like, yeah, I was in college or what, what, even if it's, you know, a trade school or something, because you don't go to college to run a CNC. You can, but, well, you know. trade school, yeah. Yeah, at trade oh, schools. fascinating. Trade schools, yeah. So it's not I've been to a trade school. Like, four-year university degrees are not going to be where 3D printing ends up. It could. It's traditional college, I mean, yeah. I mean, for peak and ultim, it wouldn't hurt to have a bachelor's degree in, or, or even a master's in polymers, um, honestly, to print large. Realistically, yeah, it's, trade schools. It's a trade. Yeah, it's, it's a, a trade. It is a trade. Yeah, until, high temp is until AI is running everything, which we got a ways to go for that. Yeah, you know, it's fascinating. Like STEM kids are great because they know how to run usually basic printers, you know, Prusas and stuff. The schools have that. They have those. So you can get somebody yeah. who knows what a slicer is and knows what the difference between an SDL and a step file is. All right, so let's go into the job market outlook in general. I mean, if we look at the reports, the McKinsey and Deloitte, Well, we can speak to this personally. You look at anything, yeah, it's huge. It's Finding massive. someone, have you ever found anyone that has a, wanted to work here that has been like, yeah, I've used uh, PPSF, Frequently. Only a couple guys from other companies that were doing those things. What what should schools do? Because you've been talking about this for a while. And schools are currently, they're buying standard printers, et cetera. But what, what, what would be the best situation? High school, that's fine. Grade school, that's fine. If you're in college and you actually are in some kind of engineering program, I highly recommend, genuinely, highly recommend learning to use the, quote, exotic high-temperature materials. I'd consider high-temperature... Uh, 350 nozzle plus, something that requires a very hot chamber type stuff. And I can go into w w the reasons why are that those polymers are actually very usable in oil and gas. The pressure they can take, the chemicals they can withstand, 
I think the Air Force loves to use Ultima 9085 because it's going to off, it will peak off gases very little. That's why they want to use it in space. And we get hit up all the time by people in these that are at NASA, and they're like, look, we want to look into this. We can, you know, see and see it, but if this is an option, and even the guys at NASA are like, we're just getting into 3D printing this stuff to see if it's possible and doable, which it is. Well, like Pumpkin Space, they were already manufacturing their ultimate part for their battery packs, but they got our printer so that they could do custom builds. They were making slightly different battery packs that had slightly different features. Rapid iteration. Rapid iteration and customization. That, so, and low, low volume. They're not doing you know 20 million of these parts. That's what FDM's year. for. Yet. But it's a, something that's, I think, going to be in very high demand. And it's interesting to say that because... With what, like, the Formlabs resins are doing? Yeah, it, it, I mean, it could reach When a it point. comes to exotic stuff, like off-gassing for safety in space, like, it's, I think, still going to be peak. In, but if you just want a really strong part, that, that we're getting into an era where you can push a button. Yeah, well, it, and at some point with the AI, everything will be button press. Uh, but we're not there yet. We're, we're years away from that. So right now... How do we know... This isn't, we're not living in an AI simulation as we speak. Who said we aren't? You can't prove it. You can't <laughs> prove that we're not. <laughs> you could only prove it by dying, I guess. And how many people have come back to tell you what it's like on the other side? You ever seen The Matrix? Because I haven't. So universities really need to set their students up for success, meaning great, you can get the basic machines and print the basic materials, but you gotta do something challenging and give them the materials that'll do the crazy applications. So, you know, whether it be chemical or thermal or mechanical strength, uh, there's still, or lightweightness, for example. I mean, there's a lot of people using Peak because it's so lightweight for the geometry they can get and the size and the strength well, and the chemical resistance, there's no better option. If you're gonna use subtractive manufacturing, you're still gonna end up with a solid part for the most part. That's well, heavier than right. one with infill. I don't care what, yeah, oftentimes, oftentimes, we get people all the time being like, needs to be solid. And be like, why? Well, it just does. And be like, what, what kind of weight does it need? And be like, okay, we can do three walls. Yeah, three walls and 20% infill, it'll be fine. Like, and all right. it is. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think it would be cool to see universities go into this. I think it, they're always a bit slow because I think there's a lot of bureaucracy they have to go through to introduce new things and, and to get things approved. But um, I think that's a huge thing that a lot of people would, stu potential students would be interested in is, you know, if you're going to become a mechanical engineer, also having the ability to probably, you know, use these high temp machines and make your own stuff. You should buy our printer because it's the cheapest and it does absolutely everything except get a really, really hot chamber. But I'm printing ultimate peak parts all day long at 100, baby. It's fine. Universities, buy our machine. Why? It makes the most sense. In the market, you do have a broad variety of machines, machines that will do high temp, machines that will do engineering materials. And we have positioned ourselves in that market at a very affordable price point in comparison to the other machines. And you get the full capability to print all of these materials. So the way we look at it is, okay, you could get one larger machine and you know spend over a hundred grand, or you could get for that price, seven or eight of our machines and do 90% of the parts that you're gonna do anyway. And that just means you could get one and save all that money, use that on materials, use it on other stuff or get multiple. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to do it, but the 22 IDX for engineering thermoplastics like Peak, Ultim, PPSU, Nylon, Polycarbonate, you name it, it runs them all at a price that's just, just I mean, potentially unbeatable. I mean, unless you go with some of the really cheap, supportless, uh, meaning no customer support, no documentation machines, which are out there. And if you really like working on machines and modifying and changing and, and tinkering, those are a great option for some people. If you're a business that wants a machine that's proven and works and has an entire staffed support team here in America by email, phone, and web chat, and video chat, okay, consider us here at Vision Miner and our 22 IDEX. It's a great deal, it's a good thing, and relationships are our number one thing. So if you're interested, give us a call, shoot us an email. We are here to help. We also have scanners and a lot of other stuff. Say there's somebody who doesn't want to go to college, doesn't want to get a certificate, doesn't want to go anywhere, just want, they know 3D printers already, but they've only gotten into the consumer level and they want a job in 3D printing. What should they do? Apply. 
literally everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, knock on the door. Yeah. Write that in a letter. Do not knock on our door. Don't knock on our, our door. Show up <laughs> and be like, hey, so I'll tell you right now that if you're young, save up your money, buy a, the cheapest high temp printer you can get and print with that. You could pretty much walk into, well, a lot of places and be like, hey, you should hire me. Why? Because I've actually done it. Have a, to have a body of work, you know, examples of your prints. To show that you know you've printed a bunch of stuff. But a cover letter. Uh, okay, it's a traditional thing. Maybe it's outdated. No. A cover letter states you and what your intention is and where you want to go and your vision. Uh, so you're like, hey, I've been using 3D printers for five years now. I absolutely love it. I'm super passionate about it. I don't want to do anything else, and I want to learn the other stuff. I'm hardworking. I'm capable. I'm willing to learn. I know it's not going to be easy, but this is what I want to do and where I want to go. Just about any place would hire somebody with that kind of attitude because it's not just about your skills and stuff. It's a lot to do with your attitude, who you are as a person. Are you? Can people work with you? You know, are you agreeable? Can you listen to instructions, get stuff done, uh, meet deadlines, stuff like that? Okay, cool. As long as you're, you know, meeting those basics, those fundamentals of being a worker anywhere, uh, then express your passion, uh, you know, and just, like, that's so huge in hiring. I'm one of those lunatics that prints here, and I go home, and I print more, and I work on machines at home, because I actually, if you're like that... Get a job in this industry because it never stops getting boring because new machines always come through, new tech, and you're like, oh, I, I get to play with, yeah, I pretty much play with SLS machines. And it's, I have unlimited nylon, the kind of thing. It's like, make what you want. Be like, okay, I love it. It's awesome. Also, learn how to 3D scan and CAD. And CAD. While you're at it, reverse engineering, too. That's, that's probably good. Anyway, thank you guys so oh. much for watching. If you have topics you want us to cover, leave them in the comments down below. Like, this video, if you liked it, it really helps us know. We do appreciate it. Uh, and if you need any 3D printers, 3D scanners, materials, or accessories thereof, we've got your back. We've got the whole thing out at visionminer.com and an American team to support it and answer all your questions. And if you need something that we don't sell, we'll tell you that and send you somewhere else. We're here to get you the right equipment for your business and your application. Anyway, have a positive rest of your day. Thank you so much. See you on the next one. Thank you, guys. Thank you.